Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection in mirrors. The topic of this video is specular versus diffuse reflection. And we want to know what is specular reflection, what is diffuse reflection, how are they similar, and how are they different. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the law of reflection. I've left a link to the video in the description section of this video if you need to review it. One thing we mentioned was that whenever light reflects off of a surface, the angle between the incoming light ray and the perpendicular or normal line is equal to the angle between the outgoing light ray and the perpendicular or normal line. We call these angles the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, and they're noted by the Greek letters theta i and theta r on the diagram. What we know is that when light reflects, these two angles are equal. And it doesn't matter how the surface is oriented, whether it's perfectly horizontal, vertical, or at some angle to the axes. The angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So what is specular reflection? It's the phenomenon that takes place whenever a beam of light strikes a surface and reflects and remains as a beam of light. You'll notice in the diagram above that a beam of light can be thought of as a collection of light rays that are traveling parallel to one another and concentrated into a narrow beam. You'll also note in the diagram for specular reflection that each of these light rays reflects and still remains concentrated in a narrow beam. This occurs whenever you shine a beam of light on a microscopically smooth surface. For such a surface as the one that that you see above, each of these light rays that are incident to the surface strike the surface in, in, in a situation in which each of the normal lines is parallel to one another. We'll contrast that now with diffuse reflection. When diffuse reflection occurs, that beam of light that strikes the surface is scattered in a variety of directions. The light rays are concentrated in the incident beam, but upon reflection, as shown in the diagram, they're going in all sorts of different directions. Instead, they're diffusing about the surface or spread about. This occurs whenever you shine an, a beam of light up on a microscopically rough surface, such as a sheet of paper that consists of fibers on its surface. And when this occurs, we would note that each individual light light ray strikes the surface and the normal line for that light ray is at a different orientation than its neighboring light ray. The picture above represents a sheet of paper magnified 50,000 times. You'll notice it consists of interwoven cellulose fibers that give it a microscopically rough texture. A beam of light striking the surface is scattered about the surface, illuminating the entire surface. Because of this, paper surfaces are easy to read off of. You don't see a glare from the light bulb that shines on it, and the paper is uniformly illuminated. While it's easy to read off of a paper surface, it's pretty difficult to look into a sheet of paper to comb your hair or put on your makeup. That's because a paper surface doesn't form an image of the objects that are placed upon it. You need a mirror for that. Consider a light bulb placed in front of a mirror. There's an image of the light bulb on the other side. And when you sight along a line at that image, a ray of light will follow the law of reflection and come straight to your eye. But if you're looking at the light bulb placed in front of a paper surface, in when you sight along a line at where the image would be, you're not guaranteed that the normal line at that position will be vertical. It could be angled and the result would be that a ray of light striking that point on the surface would be scattered away from your eye. That's not good for viewing the images of objects. But wait, isn't specular reflection a situation where the law of reflection is followed, but in diffuse reflection it's not followed? Nope, that's not true. The law of reflection is followed in both specular and diffuse reflection. Matter of fact, it's because the law of reflection is followed that these two types of reflection are different from one another. What makes them different is the fact that for each individual light ray in the bundle or beam of light rays is approaching a surface that's oriented different than one another in diffuse reflection. But in specular reflection, every normal line has the same orientation. The result is that the surface irregularities that you have for the rough surface results in each individual light ray in that beam approaches the surface with a different angle of incidence. Thus, when it follows the law of reflection, it's going to be reflected at a different angle than its neighboring light ray. 
It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for helping make the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are two resources that you'll find on our website. We've left links to each in the description section of this video. We have an interactive questioning module and a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thanks for watching.